Rishika, yes. today I'm going to tell you the stories about Lord Ganesha and when he was little and all the mischievous pranks that he used to play. Is he very cheeky? He is cheeky. More cheeky than Krishna? He, he is not more cheeky than Krishna, but he is cheeky as well when he was little. Is Krishna more cheeky? Krishna is very, very cheeky. Hanuman? He is also cheeky. Who is more cheeky? Hanuman? Uh, Ganesha or Krishna? All three, I think Krishna is more cheeky. You butter? Mm. Why are you eating butter all day? We can to give you butter. Mm. Your mommy can make some butter and give you. Why you will get it? It will all from people's houses. You cheeky, beaky Krishna. Yes. You know how he was born? No. Yeah, his mother made uh, a turmeric uh, statue of Ganesha and brought him to life. Right? You know that story already. I don't know. I don't need it. That story as well. You know that? Okay. I, I forgot it. All right. Okay. So, long, long time ago, um, Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati, they were staying on Mount Kailash. Okay. In Himalayas. Yes, that's in Himalayas. And one day, uh, Goddess Parvati, she was there and Shiva went outside somewhere. And Goddess had to take a bath and she did not wish anybody to come and interrupt her bath. Right? So what she did, she made a small statue of yeah, a boy, not like a nation. And she made a small statue of a boy and with the yellow paste correct with the yellow turmeric paste and uh, she gave life to him with her magical powers and the little boy came to life and said mother what can i do for you dear little ganesha you need to stand outside the house and guard it okay you need to uh, ensure that nobody is allowed inside right until I finish my bath and once I finish my bath I will let you know and then you can let others in if anybody wants to come and visit us and she thought Lord Shiva would come much later all right so she didn't expect Lord Shiva to be back anytime soon so Ganesha said, all right, I will stand outside the, the gates, my mother, and I'll ensure that nobody can come inside. And Goddess Pavati has given some special powers to the little boy. And he was standing outside. And who came? Shiva. Shiva came. All right. And Shiva did not know who this boy was. And he thought, all right, somebody is standing outside my house, but that's fine. Let me just go inside my house. And he started walking inside. Ganesha stopped him. He said, you're not allowed to go inside. And Shiva lost his temper. And there was a big fight between Shiva and Ganesha. First of all, Shiva sent his army so that he did not want to fight with the little boy himself. But Ganesha was very powerful. He defeated anyone that Shiva sent. So finally, Shiva had to come himself. And he also fought with Ganesha. And Ganesha fought very bravely, even with Shiva. And when finally Shiva was not able to defeat him, he used his Trishul. And Trishul is very powerful. And Trishul came and cut poor little Ganesha's head off. And at that time, Parvati Devi finished her bath and she just came outside to see what was happening. Why was there so much of noise? And she suddenly saw little boy beheaded and she was so upset and she said she will destroy the entire universe what? 
goddess Parvati said she will destroy the entire universe. What does that mean? Means she will um, destroy all the planets, all the stars, everything. What does destroy mean? Destroy means she will make them disappear. Or everything will burn away. Very dangerous. The whole universe, she's saying. And all the gods wanted to appease Parvati Devi to make her calm again. She was so upset and so angry. So they all went to Shiva and said, All the gods, we don't want the universe to be destroyed. And Goddess Parvati Devi is very powerful. And if she is angry, then we have to make sure we apologize and make things right again. She was said, but how? All she wants is the little boy. And he can't come back to life. You lose my Trishul. What can we do? Then, Brahma came and said apologies, sorry to Parvati Devi and said, please do not destroy this entire universe. We would try to make the boy alive, right? And let us go and search for somebody who is lying in the same direction as the boy is lying and we can go and get that uh, person's head if somebody is already uh, died and we can take the head yes so they didn't kind they didn't find anybody except for an elephant so, so they went and took the elephant's head and came and put it on little boy's head or body and shoo, magic happened but and who done the magic? Hmm? Uh, I think Brahma, Brahma Dev would have done the magic. Because right? he only made us alive. Mm. And that's it. The boy sprung back to life. And he was looking even more cuter than before. And he's got a little elephant head. And everybody said he is going to be one of the greatest gods and we all have to worship Ganesha before starting any new thing we have to worship Ganesha before entering into a new any house you have to worship Ganesha if you're starting a new skill you want to learn something new uh, like a musical instrument something you have to worship Ganesha and start it then he will remove all the obstacles Right, so he's very powerful that way and he came back to life and everybody loved him so much and even Lord Shiva hugged him and said I'm so sorry I did not know that you are my son because all the day we did the magic we did not know about it and Ganesha was all right he said that's fine I finally got to fight with my daddy that's more interesting yeah I'll not be sad and he said, I've got it. Yes, like I fight with yeah. the one. I'm happy. Yeah. And Parthi Devi is very happy. She said, No, I'll not disturb you. I want my little one. I want to spend time with him. Yeah. This is a, there is a moral to this story, Rishika. The moral of the story is if you are very angry, like Shiva, right? You might do things that you would be very sorry about later. So you have to be always calm. Even if you're getting ang anger, you should try to calm yourself. Mm. Yeah. So all the gods had went and uh, made Parvati Devi uh, calm down. Even Parvati Devi was quite upset. Even that's not good because she said she's going to destroy the entire universe. So. In that time, Died. Yeah, there won't be anybody left. So that's also not good. So even Parvati Devi was very upset. Yeah, that that much of anger is not good. 
even she, Lord Shiva's anger was not cut. So that's the moral of the story. It took power to Devi, but he took time. So who who went and apologized? Lord Brahma went and apologized. Right. So there are a lot of morals in the story. Okay. You, you, we have seen how the gods are behaving. Sometimes even gods do mistakes. Yeah. So we have to remember these stories and think. Okay. Even if gods are doing mistakes. And God's teaching us so many things, then we should not do mistakes ever. We should just remember these things. So the next story is Does about. We have to actually teach them because that's how we learn. Yeah, so we end up doing mistakes, and we learn because of that. But if you know that something is a mistake, you should not do it. Because that that. To learn from. Yeah, if you accidentally do a mistake, then you have to learn from it. If you already know it's a mistake, you should not do it. So messing up the room is not a good thing. If you already know it, you should not do it. If you've forgotten, that's fine. Then you can say sorry, and then you can uh, keep the room tidy like that. Okay. So that's the first story. That's how Ganesha was born. Now let's go to the second story. Two stories in one day. There are going to be more stories today. A lot of stories. So the next story is about the story of the missing conch. Conch is like a sea shell. Okay. It. You have seen a conch before? Yes. Big, I, I it's like actually, a big shell. Yeah, like this. Looks like that. Okay. And Lord Vishnu had a conch with him. Okay. And one day. He was looking for his conch, and it was lost. He couldn't find it, and it is one of his favorite things. Okay, and it's called shanka in uh, Sanskrit. In English, it's called conch. I like to say shanka. Mm. Shanka or shankam, mm? and uh, you know it, it's got a name as well. Vishnu's shankam. Called Panchajanya. That's its name, and it's a uh, it's something that you know he always uses before he goes for any fight. And he was searching for it, and he searched everywhere and he couldn't find it. And he was very upset, and he got worried. What happened to my conch? How did it disappear? And he sent all of his army to go and search for the conch. Everybody started searching everywhere, but nobody could find it. Can you guess where it could have been? Hmm? Suddenly, he started he- hearing a beautiful sound from his conch. Somebody was playing it. Somebody was blowing. Into it, he looked everywhere. Where is this coming from? It's my conch. Somebody must have found it. And he looked everywhere, and closed his eyes, and then he felt that that voice or the sound was coming from Himalayas. So he immediately went to Himalayas to search for his conch. And who did he see there? Lord Ganesha, and the little boy was holding the conch and playing it. And Lord Vishnu went and asked Ganesha, "Hey, you little boy, where did you get this from? Please give it back to me." And Ganesha said, "No, I will not give it." And he disappeared. And Vishnu again was searching for him. Again, he heard the sound coming from somewhere else, and he again went there. Again, Ganesha disappeared from there. Why are you? Why are you doing that? Huh? Is doing yeah, Vishnu thought, why are you doing like this? And he finally went to Lord Shiva and said, "Lord Shiva, your son has my conch, and he's not giving it to me. 
what can uh, you do? Can you please ask him to give it to me? Can you please tell him off? Lord Vishnu said. And Lord Shiva said, I cannot tell my little one off. Lord Ganesha must be doing it because there must be some reason. You have to find out what that reason is. Then he will give it back to you. Then Vishnu thought, huh? What could be the reason? Did he do something wrong? And then he remembered that before going to the war, he had to pray to Ganesha. Before he wanted to start some new thing, he had to pray Ganesha and he forgot to pray Ganesha. And Lord Ganesha took the conchere to make Vishnu remember. And Vishnu realized his mistake and he prayed to Ganesha. said, Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprava Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarvakaryeshu Sarvada. He said that. Then Lord Ganesha appeared in front of him and gave the conch and said, Everything will go all right. There won't be any obstacles in your way. And he gave the conch back. This is the story of Lord Shiva and the obstacles that he was having. Yes. So one day, Lord Shiva had to fight with some Rakshas. And the Rakshas came with a big army. And even Shiva had a big army. And Shiva started off for the battle. Hmm? She forgot. She thought, Lord Ganesha is my son. Why will I pray to my son? I think that rule doesn't apply to me. It will apply to everybody else, he thought. And then he started off. Then, he just stepped out and it started raining. And he was like, oh, what is this sudden rain coming? Okay, let me wait for some time. He waited for some time. The rain stopped. Then he came started. Then the vehicle in, in which he was going got stuck in the mud. And he was not able to go forward. He thought, what is happening today? That thing is working out. And then he tried to get the wheels out. And the wheels broke. What? How can I go now to the battle? Everybody was also having some problems. They all were saying, Lord, what's happening? Our horses are not going forwards, they're going backwards. We're not able to go. I think there's something stopping us. Maybe it's the Rakshas. They got lots of powers. Then Shiva thought, huh? what has happened? Then he one word. Oh dear, I forgot to pray to Lord Ganesha. And the rules apply to everyone. If there is a rule, the rule applies to everyone. Even in the school, if there is a rule, it applies to teachers, it applies to students. Even at home, if you put any rules for you, the same rules will apply for us also, the parents also. So everybody should follow the same rule book. So. Yes, we should write all the rules and then we should follow all the rules so that we don't forget them. Then Lord Shiva prayed to Ganesha. To his son. To his son. And then Ganesha made sure that all the obstacles are removed and the cart got fixed back again the chariot and he was able to go on to it and he went and he won the battle with his trishul yeah with his trishul and his rest of the weapons he was able to defeat the rakshas again the moral of the story is the rules will apply to everyone equally okay sorry hmm? yeah uh, 
everyone will have the same rules okay so last story okay this is the story of lord kubera's downfall um downfall means um losing everything and being very very sad yeah lord kubera was very rich okay so kubera is said to be the god of all riches or the lord of all the riches he has got so much of wealth yeah and you know everybody worships lord kubera if they want more money they would pray to kubera and he had a big treasure in his kingdom he had big treasure so many gold coins and a lot of money yeah so one day he invited a lot of people lot of guests to come to his house for a big party he even invited lord shiva and parvati devi and others also so they all had to come and he wanted to show how rich he was he wanted to display his wealth all the shiny things that he had all the new stuff that he had got everything he wanted to show to everyone that was the reason that he called everyone not to make everyone happy with giving them nice food that was not his purpose that's bad right yeah when you invite someone your purpose should be to make sure that the others are happy because you invite them you give them nice food and play with them make sure they are comfortable and they don't get upset with anything and you have to treat your guests like gods if anybody comes to your house you have to treat them like gods in sanskrit there is a saying called atithi devo bhava atithi means a guest devo bhava means equal to a god a guest is equal to a god so if somebody comes to your to our house and they wanted something or toys or whatever right they like something and they want to play with it we have to treat them as god and think okay what if a god comes and asks that they want to play with this will i give that to the god and have to give it to the guest that's it that's the rule simple rule okay so we should remember that now kubera called everyone and he just wanted to show all his wealth to them all the shiny things that he had so that he wanted others to feel that oh my god look at kubera's wealth and treasures he has everything and we don't have all this money and he wanted others to feel very sad so all of them came and ganesha uh, lord shiva and parvati devi could not attend the party they had other things to do so they sent ganesha and ganesha went to the party and he saw and kubera was boasting about all the things that he had he he called ganesha and said hey ganesha look what all food i have prepared for you i think you would have never eaten this much of food before you have to lot of food you must not have eaten all of these different things that have made got made for you yeah and he was being very rude and very proud and he was boasting yeah so kanesha observed kubera for some time but kubera was not changing his behavior he was being what is kanesha saying and kanesha said but that's okay you don't need to show all of these things you just came for the party and we can 
have our meals and we'll all, we'll all go away then kubir was saying why did lord shiva and parvati not come to my party they think they are very great i am more busy than them like that he was talking about so ganesha was a little upset he thought i have to teach kubera a lesson and all the guests have eaten and they went away and ganesha was still eating and kubera said that's okay we have so much of food you can eat as much as you can and he told his soldiers he serve ganesha whatever he wants and then nicely send him away he said and then he went went away the soldiers after some time went back to kubera and said hey lord you don't have any food left to give to ganesha what you don't have any more food what happened we prepared so much food and so much was left ganesha ate all of it my lord and he says he's even hungry then he thinks ha huh? and then he goes to see what he can do and he gave lots of fruits to ganesha that like we have so many fruits we have big big gardens we get all these fruits you can have some fruits and ganesha said all right and then he started eating the fruits and he ate all the fruits in the whole garden and he said i'm still hungry can you please feed me a little bit more kubera said what and ganesha said if you don't have anything to eat i will eat your gold coins and kubera can't say no because it's a, he's a guest now he started realizing that there is something wrong that he has done huh? and ganesha started eating all the wealth all the gold coins all the treasure all the treasure is finished yeah his treasure has become zero and ganesha said i'm still hungry i want to eat more yeah and kubera was oh my what is this all my wealth has vanished and he is still not happy hmm and he said finally he ate everything and said only kubera was left said i have to eat you also because i'm still hungry then kubera realized oh i have to apologize to ganesha and he apologized and said he went to uh, he ran actually kubera ran and ganesha was running behind him kubera ran 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 went to the himalayas and fell at lord shiva's feet and said please protect me your son is going to eat me he is eating all my food is eaten all my wealth and is eaten my whole castle everything is eaten i don't have anything left and is going to eat me now then shiva said okay i think ganesha was is hungry you didn't give him food that's why he is eating he is asking for more let me give him some food kubera said what i have given him so much you can't give him anything that i i have given him then lord shiva said wait and he just took some marmara alu one just you know puffed rice the white thing he just took one um a handful of um uh, marmara alu and puffed rice and gave it to ganesh and said my little son have it and he gave it with lots of love and ganesha ate all of the puff rice and said thank you daddy my tummy is full i can't eat any more then kubera realized what he ate one uh, handful of puff rice that lord shiva gave and he was saying he doesn't have any more hung- hunger that means he realized lord shiva gave that with lots of love if somebody gives something with lots of love then even if it is just a handful of food that will be enough others will be happy but if you give things without love then whatever amount you give 
That's not enough. There's some more. No. And that's the moral of the story. Then Kubera learned his lesson and said, I'm very sorry, Ganesh. I learned my lesson. I'll not be so proud that I have all of these things. Okay? These things can vanish. What is more important is loving the guests and treating them with respect. And Ganesh said, Don't worry. Everything that you had will be back. You go home and your castle, all the money, everything is back. And Kubera thanked Ganesha and went away. The end.